Welcome to Visions of Success Internet Talk Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Fred Simkowski. You know, someone once said that success is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. Well, I believe that you need just as much inspiration, if not more, than just perspiration. I mean, after all, all the sweat in the world isn't going to make you successful unless you are inspired. This is the place to go to seek insights, inspiration, advice, tricks, tips on how to attain the life and career success you've always dreamed of, wanted, and desired. Today, we are going to kick butt with Rosie Picard. Rosie tells her story on the radio, television, and in magazine interviews around the globe. She's an ex-policewoman and private investigator. She's beaten all the odds to transform a life of violence, crime, and anguish into a life of success. This Aussie ex-cop became a global professional butt kicker and has written the book Time to Kick Butt so you can start on your way butt kicking today. If you want more out of life, dream of greater success, or desire greater wealth and prosperity, you need the butt kicker. Rosie will show you how to get results without the terrible limitations of that one soul-destroying word, but, B-U-T. So, Rosie, how are you today? I'm fabulous, thanks, Fred. Excellent, excellent. How is it in Australia these days? I was going to say, I laughed in that introduction. I thought, I need to get the American accent happening. <laughs> because I was <laughs> Aussie. <laughs> so I said, Aussie. <laughs> okay, o- o- Aussie, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll end up spending 30 minutes on the correct <laughs> pronunciation of Aussie. It's, I'm quite sure there's going to be listeners that laugh at how I pronounce things, as no doubt the same on the other side of the globe. But the thing you didn't mispronounce was the but that we need to get rid of in order to get great lives. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, let's put it this way. I'm from Brooklyn, so my accent can't be any worse than yours. <laughs> so exactly. today, today we're going to talk about kick butt for professional and personal success. So let's start with this one first important question. You're the author of Kick Butt, It's Time. So let's talk about what is kick butt about. In fact, you spell it with only one T as opposed to two. So I'm gathering there's a specific intention there. So tell our audience, what is kick butt, it's time all about? Yes, Fred. Most people, when they hear that I've been a policewoman and hear that I'm now a professional butt kicker, assume that it is that butt that you sit on that I'm going to be kicking. I could have kicked that one. However, just like when you sit on that butt, you go nowhere in life, the butt in your head is far more deadly and lethal uh, than the one that you sit on. Because we in Australia, we call them bloody useless thoughts. It's an acronym, so we can understand that every time you use that word butt, what generally follows is a bloody useless thought, like, but I'm too old to do that, but my parents won't let me do that, but I don't have the money to do that. Whatever but, but, but people are using as a justification or cop-out is a bloody useless thought. And you either have the results you want or you don't. And if you don't, you've got to look at those buts first. And interesting, interesting. I knew there had to be a reason for that, okay? I mean, being from Brooklyn, I figured you just spelled it wrong. <laughs> And and many people do because on the book there's an exclam- exclamation mark after the but. So they think, oh, yes, it's a typo error until they think a little bit further and realize that I'm not about physical force. I used to be. I was very motivational when I held a Smith & Wesson in my hand and told you what to do. <laughs> However, these days, as a motivator, I've got to be far more influential in order to get people to want to do what is best for themselves. 
in getting yeah. results. Yeah, I know. And sometimes, sometimes it's those negative thoughts that are the toughest ones to get rid of. Well, people think, you know, um, they try to escape their thoughts, and it's like trying to outrun your legs. It just doesn't happen. So the easiest is not getting busy out there in the world trying to fix all your problems, and then most of us have got relations and loved ones, and they've got loads of problems that they like to share with us as well, but then we feel obligated as if somehow that's our role to get involved and try and fix all that. It's no wonder we feel overwhelmed, distressed at our wit's end, is because that's just too much of a workload for any sane human being. However, if you can work with what you have, which is what's inside your head, those thoughts, and start managing that area, that's what being a butt kicker is about, then the flow on of ripple effect of results ends up matching, funnily enough, whatever's coming out of your headspace. So it's the old saying, you know, start to think better, start to feel better, start to do better. Excellent, excellent. So, you know, I think the next thing I'd like to talk about is you have a very interesting background. Your bio reads like someone I could see Angelina Jolie playing in the movie. I mean, you're quite feminine and, dare I say, small. Yet, for over 16 years, you've been a policewoman, a private eye, rehabilitation and security specialist and trainer, Jeez. and even provided security for pr Princess Di. So, I see you've slept in crocodile beds in the Australian Ivory. Outback on expedition, as well as traveling to Indonesia and providing, what did you do? Provide trauma therapy after the tsunami killed 200,000, and you've been recognized in many of those roles being showcased by the Australian government as a successful specialist. Together with being written, you know, having written two other books that were published in both Australia and America. If this isn't, I, I got news for you. If that's not a premise for a movie, I don't know what is. <laughs> now, would I be correct to assume that there is, that that is where your kick butt mindset and brand emerged? Yes, you would be correct, Fred, because growing up, I had my head in almost every type of bloody useless thought that existed, and that served to hold me back. And then I worked in industries and careers that the vast number of people I came across had those bloody useless thoughts, especially within the criminal system, uh, in law enforcement, the education and health system. There weren't too many people that had chronic conditions happening in their lives that didn't also have the chronic headset to match. And I understand much of the mind. It became my own personal passion in order to improve my own life. So I discovered in reading over 400 books, I thought, why didn't someone just put this information, this self-help and personal empowerment in a one simple and concise, easy to do uh, type of script? And that's why I wrote Kick Butt, It's Time because I wanted all the content available to get started straight away in making small changes, not huge astronomical changes that, you know, you can't maintain over a long period of time. It's like running flat out. You can only run flat out for so long before your body's worn out, had enough and goes, bugger it, I'm going back to walking. So it's the same with changing our lifestyles and improving for well-being. We've got to make small incremental changes that are easy to maintain and we can commit to for life. And it's over time that we start to see the better and better results. And a lot of people are after fast fixes, and the fastest fix I can give them is get rid of that word but out of your vocabulary today. Yeah, and, and I think that that's uh, the biggest problem. People tend to look at the goal and forget to look at what do you got to do to get there. And I think you make a great point. You know, it's really about, you know, taking those those baby steps, if you will. And then once you get some of those baby steps behind you, you get a little bit more confident. And then a lot of the butts go away, don't they? Exactly, Fred. And most of us that are successful and are achieving, and even those that aren't, we're, we're goal-orientated. We want to see the end result. 
and I was very much this way, type A personality, busy doing, 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 and I dare say you being from New York, many there are very cold yeah. orientated. They certainly are when you walk the wrong way across them on the street. <laughs> and, you know, they know where they're going and where they want to get to and look at anyone in my way. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you can get the result. However, if you haven't enjoyed the process, the currency you're expending in order to get what you want is called your life. And, you know, I, I've met with many people that are terminal. And as they are terminal... You know, they're regretting so many of their days, their minutes, their hours and how it was previously spent. And from that vantage point of impending death, they're now wanting to relive their lives in a new fashion. Now, you don't need to be confronted with your mortality to make a better decision of how you want to spend your life. All you've got to think of is how does this make me feel? You know, we have a guidance within us at all times of how we're feeling. And before we do any action... Get yourself feeling better on the topic is priority because I can guarantee that whenever you take any actions being goal orientated from a bad feeling state, that's exactly where you end up in a further and worse bad feeling state than you started from because they're reactions, not inspired actions. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, you mentioned previously how you met a a uni student. Does that a university student? What That's correct. Uni That's our ab Aussie, <laughs> Aussie abbreviation. We, it's funny how we shorten a lot of words and a lot of names, and yet at other times we might give you the longest possible name, <laughs> the shortest term. So instead of saying bye, we'll say hit the frog and toad. <laughs> so so a uni student is university. Okay, good. So who told you that she started underlying, this is very interesting, she started underlying important passages only to discover uh, in your book that she had underlined most of the book. <laughs> is is this common feedback for kick butt and what would you expect readers to get from the book? Well, yes, it is actually common feedback. I love going to my inbox and seeing emails from around the globe of different people that even years later that are stating the changes that they've made and the improved mindset that they've got. So that's at the very least I expect people to get is a, a little bit of expansion from where they currently are. For some, it's a massive expansion. And for others that are ready to take the world by storm, this is just the full fuel that they need to get them on the go. And I remember one woman who wrote to me and she said, Rosie, you make me feel like going to pat the dog next door. And I thought, it's a big deal. <laughs> and she, she continued, this may not sound like much, but what you may not understand is that it's pouring rain outside and cold and I really don't like dogs. <laughs> so now to me, that's an ultimate compliment when, you know, you've shifted your perspective to find a better way of viewing the world it's the old saying, when you see all things with love, soon you'll love all things you see. And yeah. it doesn't start by everything changing out there uh, so that you have such a soft and easy journey. It's about that you change inside you so you have a soft, easy resting place 24-7 wherever you take yourself. So so I guess it truly it, it, it is about, you know, a lot of people, I can't tell you how many people spend gazillions of dollars, if you will, that's an over, over, <laughs> here, but anyway, gazillions of dollars on going somebody that's going to teach you how to be motivated, when it really is sitting down, taking a look at yourself and saying, what do I really want to do? What, what? What are my skills? What are my abilities? And trying to live within what you have as opposed to trying to go out and get something that uh, God knows where it is. Well, it's interesting because most of us, I know certainly within the Australian schooling system, aren't um, taught about emotional intelligence. We're taught about our IQ and not our EQ. And funnily enough, it's as soon as you become emotionally enraged or engulfed in a situation that smart becomes dumb in an instant. <laughs> you know, you can have the smartest person that overreacts because they've been stimulated in such a way emotionally. Now, if you had a rosy world, emotional intelligence would be equal in standing with your own intelligence quota. The reason why is because most people aren't taught 
how to improve their own minds or understand their flow of energy of what's happening around them to take stock before they take action and that reaction is what causes some especially having been a cop and seeing the aftermath of so many emotional overreactions in the time and these aren't bad people they're good people that made bad choices and decisions in the moment and that's what kick butt is about it's about taking back empowerment and getting to sit down with yourself but understanding it's a practice you're not going to get it overnight the same as if you want to be you know a, a golf golfing extraordinaire if you went out and were to hit a hole in one every single time on that golf course you would be bored silly so masters understand that they know that they set their traps they set their challenges up in order to improve their mastership and that's how i see life in many ways that we have challenges dilemmas stresses nothing is above us as mother Teresa would say you know uh i know god trusts me i just wish he wouldn't trust me so much <laughs> as many of the situations that she was confronted with in life and it's the same with us so in our mastership it's just about practice not you know getting mad at ourselves we didn't get that right or we didn't do that properly or right according to who properly according to who you know we're measuring ourselves against ourselves at all times and seeking an improvement and expansion and the only way we know we got that improvement and expansion is because we start to feel better and as we start to feel better we get surrounded by more and more events and people and circumstances that make us feel better and we go oh wow isn't this amazing it's the old you know birds of a feather flock together or you know one thing after another happens and the same with negative thoughts and for me i've got my own personal self interest that i'd rather things feel good than things feel bad and that's my motivator in order to practice because i'm going to be spending the currency of my life whether i like it or not so i choose to like it and if i don't like it i choose to seek ways that i can make it more likable than it was previously and it's not slap a happy face on something that's miserable and terrible like people have extreme circumstances like cancer bankruptcy uh violence aggression there's lots going on that you can't slap a happy face on and say hey feel good about that however what you can do for example if you have cancer as one of my girlfriends she passed from date of diagnosis to death was 8 months and she chose the path of being miserable unhappy angry bitter and yes it's an overwhelming time however at that time she still has that choice of how she continues to show up and that's powerful to some people to hear to take responsibility for that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I I interviewed a number of months ago a Dr. Phil Harris, okay? And I I lovingly called him Dr. Phil if you know that yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> I did. And and when he contacted me about being on the show, he had gone through his third round of chemotherapy for cancer. Okay, and he was just kind of getting back to himself, but he wanted to be on the show. So I said to him, Phil, you can be on the show whenever you want, but make sure you're ready to do it. He says, Fred, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. And a couple of weeks later, after he finally finished up that third round of chemotherapy, he scheduled the interview, and before I even started the interview, I said to him, Phil, are you okay to do this? And he says, Fred, let's do it. And I tell you, he was terrific. And now he finally beat the cancer because I think of his positive attitude. He beat the cancer. He teaches at a college. He helps coach other people. I mean, the man is amazing. And I never heard a negative word out of him for all this two years that I know him. Yes. It does make And there a are many There are there are many inspirational people out there just as there are many people who are choosing actions and results that aren't really helping themselves or those around them in any way. And that's the difference. You know, it comes down to it's a choice. And I can tell you the most people get angry with me is that they're in defense of their current circumstances and they'll go Rosie you don't understand this is what i have bang 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 and they get so angry and they for- forget that other people have had their own journeys and their own experiences i got queen 
crowned the queen of adversity for much that I've experienced to this date. <laughs> However, we don't hang our life up on that hook and go, well, there's me, I'm done for, I'm over with. <laughs> I've got no hope, I might as well be angry, bitter and miserable. Like my young son, who's five now, but back when he was three, I remember him being so ill one night and he's been in critical care and I've carried him in not breathing into hospitals. So I know the challenge and the difficulty that parents face with you know, illnesses with their children. And I was worn out and exhausted this night, absolutely worn out. And I'm a person who gets cranky when I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> There'll be people that know me that will be laughing going, Rosie, cranky? There's another word we use for that. <laughs> <laughs> so cranky's a bit mild. But anyway, uh, you don't mess with me when I haven't had enough sleep. <laughs> and my little one was really not letting me get to sleep. And I roused on him and I finally took him into my bed with me, which I don't normally do. And uh, he kept tossing and turning, and I was like, oh, for goodness sake, let me get to the sleep. <laughs> and he sat up, and he leant over me, and he gave me the sweetest kiss, and he went, Mummy, it's okay, I love you. <laughs> and I thought, he was the sick one. He was the one feeling miserable. I was the healthy one. I was the one being miserable. And there's a difference. Feeling miserable doesn't mean you have to be miserable. And that's what my child uh, <laughs> taught this old dog. <laughs> so, and it's still a lesson in practice. I can't just have hey, it listen, down pat before it's, we... a, it's a lesson in practice all the time, okay? Exactly. So, And that's so, the same for everybody else. Is understanding you don't have to get it right. You just have to get it a bit better, a bit better, and a bit better. And that's how you show up in your life and the lives of others. Absolutely. So, you know, you acknowledge being confrontational and challenging to what's not working in people's lives. And now I'm on, you know, you seem to be on your best behavior, at least you say you do. What do you see most people having the greatest difficulty with in their life? Uh, relationships easily. Uh, as basically relationships mirror us and amplify us neck and neck with understanding self, uh, why events are happening and how to get a handle on them and then get some leverage. So some people have delusional mindsets where they say it's all good and deny, 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 uh, especially when the bills are mounting up and go, tra la 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 stick a, <laughs> stick a happy <laughs> face on that. Uh, the money will come from somewhere. While there are others that make mountains out of molehills that go into an absolute meltdown uh, because their ex of two weeks <laughs> or their partner of two weeks is, you, you know, ending the relationship with them. So we've got such diversity amongst us and I've had the good fortune to help people at extremes. That's sort of my area of specialty. So you certainly wouldn't say it's all good uh, to the woman that I worked with who had lost a third child in a drowning accident. Oh, uh, nor would you say buck up buddy to the man that I also worked with who turned to alcohol to ease his pain after the murder of his gorgeous 18 year old daughter so there are certainly people that have extreme experiences as part of their journey in this life and they need to be given real tools in order to a get back in the moment uh, because you don't want them bogged down uh, living in the past or regurgitating those horror mo moments again and again in their head which is what many people do I specialize in sexual assaults within the police force as well so there are many people that continually relive those events again and again and bring the past into the present to make the present really murky. So my goal is irrespective what shape a person shows up in or what experiences they've had in their lives that I call the vehicles that help move them from where they were to where they're going, um, that they need the real practical steps to overcome these different adversities and especially teenagers today because they're not taught as I mentioned these emotional skills and we've got social media we've got so many means that people can misrepresent misperceive misunderstand that it can become quite a toxic mess inside a kid's head uh, because they haven't had enough life experience yet to know that things do pass that after every winter there is a spring that things can improve and, you know, I, I had to deliver the death message to parents of teen children that have simply experienced, I guess, ridicule of a form that many others would be able to shrug off. But at their young age and with their limited emotional experience, weren't able to get a handle on it and a grip on it. So personal empowerment 
is key. Someone else can't give it and do it for you. Just like someone else can't eat for you and you get the benefit of it. Um, so I'm on what we mentioned was my best behavior because I want the best results for myself. And behavior is my actions. And those actions will reveal where I'm at. So if you're lying, stealing, cheating, you cannot possibly think that your head believes in abundance or prosperity or well-being. And those actions reveal where your head's at. And if that's where your head's at, that's where your life's at. So it's small, as you mentioned earlier, baby steps in the right direction in order to take back your own life. And one gentleman, he came home to three of his daughters murdered in the lounge room. And he currently works today bringing offenders together with their victims so that the victims are A, empowered, that the offenders realize the consequences of their actions. And it's not a name and shame game. It's to bring the emotion back into the experience, to have it raw, to have it real, to have it felt, to have it experienced. Because I can guarantee there's not one of these offenders that would wish the same action ever again. So therefore, now that they have a real experience and the emotional connection with it, they're sharing with many others who could be potential offenders that emotional energy equivalent to hopefully stop others from then offending in that same path. And it's very, very powerful. It's, today is about authentic teachers, people who have the real experiences, and they're able to demonstrate through their lives and their actions that all things are possible. And there are millions of them, fortunately, walking this planet, living day to day, and they're not on rooftops singing their own praises. They're not self-appointed gurus. You know, it could be the person at the laundromat uh, every week that you don't know what they do in their spare time. I'll just quickly tell you a story of Mr. Chen in China who in his spare time patrols one of the largest bridges that was built back in 1969 and because the big bridge was built it brought in a flood of migrant workers as well for potential work. However, because there's such a flood uh, of them, there isn't enough work and through hard times a lot would head to this bridge to jump off it and commit suicide. Mr. Chen in his spare time patrols this bridge in order to save potential jumpers and to date he has saved 235 lives and one of the men that he fought off the bridge like physically fought him down he learned his story that he was jumping because his daughter had suffered from leukemia and he needed to pay off the $50,000 debt he'd incurred and thought the life insurance was the only way to go. Mr Chen not only saved his life that day but helped him in his fundraising efforts and their best buddies today. And now Mr. Chen has an ally to help him patrol that bridge and save even more lives. Wow. That's what Kick Butt is about, and that is what powerful people are doing without recognition. Wow. So some of the, some of the tips you've given us today is small incremental steps, okay, to get to that change you're looking for. Taking back the empowerment only through practice. You got to keep practicing it. So, do you have a couple of short, quick tips else that people could start doing tomorrow to start kicking those butts away? Exactly. Well, the first, I do a really simple philosophy, which is you've got to identify it in order to rectify it. You can't fight what you can't see. So, identifying is any time you use the word "but," what follows afterwards. You've just identified what your cop out or your excuse is. Once you've identified that, you can work to rectify it. And that's what I addressed in the book. Like many of the excuses are lack of opportunity, lack of confidence, denial, lack of knowledge, lack of persistence, lack of faith and apathy. So part two of the book is addressing every single one of these excuses, how you can make uh, c consistent steps along the way. But the first would be getting rid of the word but because as soon as we do, we find... A, when someone's talking and we don't use that word but, we use however, they feel we've heard them and we're in alignment with them, which is different to agreement. We don't have to agree with someone. We can be in alignment, which means that we've heard what they've had to say, however, we may have a differing perspective, whereas but is argumentative and also automatically carries the assumption that we haven't even bothered listening to what the person has to say. So eliminating that word but takes away disagreement, dissension, separation, a lot right at the beginning in such a simple act. The three letters. You'll never miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, 
just so we make sure people know, one, we'd like to know, first of all, how can they get the book? Two, how can they contact you? How, you know, anything that's coming up that uh, people would be interested in? Go. Well, yes, well, the website is, now remember, I'm Australian people, so don't just do a .com. You've got to do a .com.au, AU for Australia. So it's www.kickbutt. And as you pointed out right at the beginning, it's spelt with only one T, not two Ts, or God knows what site you'll end up at. So kickbutt.com.au. And uh, send me an email of any challenges or queries or any help you may need. Uh, the book is available at a few locations because it's published within the US and the UK and, as I've heard, Brazil and uh, a few other locations. However, I don't exactly have the direct uh, link because that's via the publisher. So just send me an email or get in contact with me. And if you are involved at all in the media industry, uh, that's what my passion is, is promoting and working with our war veterans uh, and ex-law enforcement in order to help them return home in their heads before they get to their bed. So if you have any of those connections, please get in touch. It's our way of working together to empower many others uh, in this wonderful journey called our life. Good. And you can email Rosie at Rosie, R-O-S-I-E, at kickbutt, K-I-C-K-B-U-T, dot com, and make sure you do dot A-U, because she's in Australia. Rosie, this has been great. I want to thank you for this interview, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people kicking butts right now. Thanks, Fred. Have a great day. You'll catch up to us eventually. You remember, yes. you're talking to your future here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Remember to go to my website, lifecareerbusinesscoach.com, for more information and assistance you may be looking for. There is a link there for this show, Visions of Success Internet Talk Radio, where you can listen to replays and more interviews on a regular basis. And be sure to subscribe to my monthly newsletter for more great learning and insight. This show airs every Friday and was hosted by Amazing Women of Power Radio Network and in conjunction with Raven International Network. Have a great day and you can get it done.